so in this uh, part of the uh, video we are going to talk about uh, the existence theory for heat equation okay existence uh, theory for heat equation okay if you remember uh, for heat equation up till now we want to talk about well posedness right and uh, what did we derive we derived that there is a unique solution if omega is bounded we have derived unique solution and the backward uniqueness too but now uh, we want to find the uh, you know uh, the heat equation uh, in solution i mean existence yeah so let's say you have are given this equation ut minus laplacian of u equals to zero okay and uh, this is for now let's just assume this is in rn cross this is the time variable zero infinity so this is time this is x huh? so this is your equation now what sort of um, uh, functions can you think of which satisfies this equation so for example let's say u of xt equals to a constant any constant k yeah, okay whatever is k k is in r let's say okay k is in r solves one so let's say that's your one solves one it's not very difficult to see right and of course number two let's just assume that one dimensional heat equation 1d heat equation heat equation given by uh, ut minus ux x equals to zero that's one dimensional heat equation right and what is the solution of this thing u of xt how does it look like any solution of one dimensional heat equation it will look like this uh, so essentially it will look like u of xt is see uh, i mean i'm just showing you one way of doing this thing i want a u such that whose one derivative with respect to t is the twice derivative with respect to x so essentially let's say u of t is t okay u of x t i'm starting out with t so if you are taking u t here it is basically one okay and minus um, this has to be u x x so basically you are looking for a u such that u x x is one right so u x x is one is essentially x square by two right so you take one derivative is two x and twice derivative is uh, two so that is one and one minus. okay so this this is one is a solution is a solution right of this let's say that's your two solves two yeah of course you can construct in such a way you can of course construct a solution like this right yes uh, which uh, satisfies the two-dimensional or n-dimensional heat equation yes that is of course can be done but we are interested in much more right uh, if you remember from your laplace equation we derived something called a fundamental solution which we used to solve you know the laplace equation right uh, which we used to solve the laplace equation uh, the you know inhomogeneous laplace equation yes so we are also here also we are going to do exactly the same kind of thing we are going to find something called a fundamental solution of heat equation fundamental so fundamental solutions are you know i mean i do not want to give you the exact definition of fundamental solution it's not very difficult it's basically this thing equals to the direct delta okay then any solution which satisfies that but the thing is i am not quite sure whether you guys know direct delta because that is basically a distribution okay so i'm going to skip all the you know the jargons associated with fundamental solutions so for now it's a very very special kind of solution you can think of it like that so what is the fundamental solution fundamental solution for heat equation okay so you see for laplace equation we know what is the fundamental solution i want to find it for a heat equation okay fundamental solution for a heat equation okay so um, so one small remark is this see remark while finding fundamental solution you remember for laplacian we uh, actually uh, use the fact that it is rotational invariant laplace equation and hence we look for radial solutions here uh, no such thing can be done because t the variable t is a problem when t varies between zero and infinity that creates some problem okay so what we are going to do is we are going to only look look at some scaling factors so one small remark this i want you guys to check so let let u solves one clear if you use small one then if you you know scale this u such that u of lambda x lambda square of t you do it like this for lambda in r then this also solves one is this clear so if u solves one then u of lambda t lambda square t for lambda in r also solves one okay 
now this actually gives us some idea about what sort of so this you guys have to check it yourself okay check it yourself not very difficult thing to do i am absolutely certain that you guys can do it yourself you just need some chain rule application of chain rule okay just do that now once you have this so you see essentially what that says is we basically should look for we should look for look for solutions of the form u of xt as 1 by t power alpha okay some fu function v of x by t power beta clear uh, this is what and uh, alpha beta is in r okay here v from rn to r is the unknown okay see here this says that if you if you scale the x very x variable as lambda x and t as lambda square t so scaling is with respect to t it has to be lambda square with respect to x it is just lambda with this scaling what we can show is you solve if you solve this equation that scaling uh, if you scale the u like that then it also that particular function this new function that also satisfies the heat equation so from here what you get is you are basically getting that i mean uh, you know there is a scaling going on between x and t and uh, we want to exploit that particular uh, idea that is why we are just taking it like v of x by t to the power beta okay so essentially if you think of it like this it is basically x by root t it should be right x by root t x is lambda is 1 okay so here this should be square right i mean if you want to scale it properly so basically v of x by lambda root t should be there okay but we are uh, th that should actually work here yeah but we are not doing that we are just writing it as a arbitrary beta and we want to find what beta is okay now let's say this is 3 now substituting three in one we get okay this we get as I, i'm just writing it down yeah alpha times t power minus alpha plus one v of y plus beta times t power minus alpha plus one y dot gradient of v y plus t power minus alpha plus 2 beta okay laplacian of v of y equals to 0 okay how do you how did we get this i am just putting this thing in this equation okay so basically you have this u you write down what ut is and after that write down what uxx is and after that you just put it together okay so this also you have to do it yourself you have to try check it this part okay it's very very easy thing to do and not um, a problem so here here where y is uh, defined by t to the power minus beta times x square so with this definition we are just writing it like this now you see here this beta is a problem why it is a problem because if beta 2 beta is 1 then all of this expression is basically the same so i can throw out t to the power minus alpha plus 1 right if see if 2 beta is 1 okay then the see e, alpha beta is on our hands yeah if i am taking 2 beta to be 1 so this will become minus alpha plus 1 this is minus alpha plus 1 this is minus alpha plus 1 i can then throw it out huh? if i throw it out what will happen is the equation transform into alpha times v v of y of course plus half y dot gradient of v of y plus laplacian of v is zero okay this is what we are getting and uh, if you mm, you know i want to simplify this further okay so uh, let us assume let us assume 
see again v and all these things is on our hand so we can assume whatever we want okay of course it has to be you know in line with whatever uh, the equation says okay so we can't just assume any arbitrary thing you want but essentially what we are going to do is we are going to look for radial v yeah so we are going to assume that v of y should look like some function w of mod y okay for some w from r to r so essentially i am looking for radial uh, v which is radial okay so if that ha is happening again you can just take you know this thing we calculated if, Lap if v of y is radial uh, radial function of w then laplacian of v is w double prime plus n minus 1 by r w prime this we did to why we do did Laplacian okay so let's write it down of uh, so plus half r w prime okay because mod y is r here so this is why r huh? and gradient of v is basically w prime and this one Laplacian of v is w double prime plus n minus 1 by r w prime is 0 okay let me put it this way this is for your Laplacian of V, this is for your half Y gradient W, oh sorry, gradient of V, okay, and this is of course alpha times V, okay. See, gradient of V, V is radial, so gradient of V is just the derivative of V, I mean V, you know, um, V is W of y, mod Y, so that's why the derivative of W, okay, so which is W prime. Uh, y is r right y is basically mod y so that's your r that's why i just replace it with r okay so once you do all of these what we can do is uh, i can write this equation as r power n minus 1 w prime whole prime okay plus half r power n w prime whole prime this is equals to zero okay this is after setting alpha as n by 2 okay this is see once we see now this alpha is also in our hand so if i'm choosing alpha to be n by 2 then that equation transform into this this also please check it yourself huh? so there are three things these are very easy things to check so it's not a problem and thus from here what we get we get r power n minus 1 w prime plus half r power n w this is equals to uh, some constant c c is some constant some constant clear some constant now you see uh, what happens as i mean you know i want to find that what happens to the limit of w as r tends to infinity so we are assuming see this w is on our hand so we are assuming that the we are looking for a radial function such that limit r tends to infinity w equals to limit r tends to infinity w prime which is equals to 0 okay this is what we are assuming why we are assuming this because this will actually give us c equals to 0 clear okay so if c equals to 0 therefore what will have c what we are trying to do is we are going to try to find some solutions of that alpha beta is on our hand so we chose beta in such a way that you know uh, the equation becomes more easy now after that we chose w uh, which is a radial function so essentially we chose v in such a way that it becomes a radial function and we got this now i want to remove this c yeah to add of course alpha equals to n by 2 we are getting this thing so i chose alpha also now i want to remove this c to remove this c i am assuming that the radial function which i am choosing uh, will do this thing okay that will give you c equals to 0 now if c equals to 0 that what does that give you that gives me w prime equals to uh, minus half r w right from here uh, i can just throw out r to the one n minus 1 Okay. So you understand, this is on our hands, we are manipulating, right? That is what we are doing, we are manipulating the solution. And um, therefore, uh, what do we have, if you want to solve this thing, we have uh, basically W is uh, some constant, I don't know what do I put, A, B, C, whatever I, I put everything, uh, uh, let's say D, uh, D exponential of minus R square by uh, 4 okay let's just choose it uh, i mean right like the d is some constant okay d is some constant 
so i hope you understand this is all manipulation we are manipulating our solution to look like this that's all okay so if you combine all of these if you combine so if you combine this w w is what v right and if you combine all of these then what do we conclude we can conclude that uh, the function which you are choosing uh, so our required our required function let's say u of xt how does it look like it looks like some constant t okay by t to the power n by 2 exponential this is exponential minus mod x square by this is this e is exponential okay by 4 t clear so this is what we are going to get uh, okay so from here we are going to define define the fundamental solution okay so the function the function f of xt or phi of xt let's say phi of xt huh? let's just call phi of xt which is given by uh, 1 by 4 pi t whole power n by 2 okay exponential minus mod x square by 4t okay and x is in rn and t positive okay and 0 uh, for x is in rn and t negative is called is called the fundamental solution of heat equation okay is called the fundamental solution of the heat equation heat equation okay I hope this is clear to all of you see why it was happening is because we have chose we chose our u to be 1 by t2 or alpha right alpha we chose to be n by 2 okay so 1 by t2 with n by 2 only we are getting this solution so alpha we chose it to be n by 2 that is why 1 by t2 or alpha which is n by 2 and v is x by t2 or beta right so that is why v is w so basically it is exponential of minus mod x square r is mod x mod x square by 4 t right because beta we just put the value of beta and this is what we are getting and this is the fundamental solution of heat equation okay so please remember this is a very very important uh, property huh? and very so this um, i mean this is a basis of all harmonic functions okay uh, sorry not harmonic functions this is a basis of many different uh, you know analysis in harmonic um, theory function theory okay so let's write down some properties of uh, uh, of this fundamental solution so some properties properties of fundamental solution fundamental solutions okay so mm, number one for all x y in rn x y in rn and t positive clear mm, fundamental solution of x minus y times t yeah if you just write it like this this is always positive i hope this is fine exponential function is positive this is a positive function that is always positive okay there is nothing to do here number two again for all x y in rn rn and t positive t positive see if you write this thing like delta t so which is you know u t minus laplacian of phi of x minus y times t yeah can you guess what it is this is going to be zero right because fundamental solution this actually solves the heat equation so it has to be this i hope you understand what is del t of phi it is phi t yeah? and for all x in rn and t positive okay this is true integral over rn okay phi of x minus y times t dy this is going to be 1 okay why this is to um, see uh, this is the relation which you want so basically why uh, the integral of this fundamental solution has to be 1 just like uh, in the case of heat equation and do, just because of that we took this d to be 1 by 4 pi whole power n by 2 you understand yeah that is the reason why we took uh, this constant to be there 
okay and number four the last property is uh, for any delta positive for any delta positive and for all x in rn okay for all x in rn uh, limit t tends to 0 plus okay and integral so basically if you are looking at a fundamental solution above uh, i mean you outside in the exterior domain okay phi of x minus y times delta uh, sorry t okay um, d y is zero right so these are the properties so let me um, i mean proof one and two are just like i mean the easy one huh? uh, let's prove the fourth property first and then we are going to the third property so the fourth property is limit t tends to zero plus integral over the exterior domain okay sorry uh, this is greater than delta x greater than delta so essentially what it is saying is if you are taking the fundamental solution of the heat equation okay dy outside the you know ball with radius delta okay so in the exterior domain and as you push t towards 0 okay as you push to t towards 0 this is becoming 0 okay how do you show that so to show something like this what we are going to do is we are going to write this as limit t tends to 0 plus this is some calculation yes let's write it like this minus pi times n by 2 okay minus n by 2 sorry okay uh, so i'm just writing out what phi of t is and after that i'm using a um, change of variable yes so i hope you guys can check this yourself huh? this is not very difficult thing to do so mod for mod z greater than 4 delta by 40 and that is why that uh, i mean there is 1 by 4 term is there right that's gone because i'm just choosing my my mod delta to be greater than delta by 40 okay this change of variable under this change of variable this turns out to be mod z square dz clear and that is becoming okay so i'm just using a change of variable here and uh, you writing phi to be um, you know mod z greater than delta y on this uh, domain i'm just writing phi which is exponential minus mod z square okay once we does, does this this constant will look like this and um, you can show that as limit t tends to zero this particular thing goes to zero okay because this is becoming uh, you know smaller and smaller you see as t goes to 0 this particular thing for delta by 40 is going towards infinity so basically you are taking mod z which is greater than you know extremely big yeah mod z is extremely big so uh, and this integral since it is summable this has to be 0 okay now uh, what about the third property third property is also a change of variable so essentially it says that uh, i mean you see essentially third property you can write write it like this huh? there is uh, nothing wrong in writing this thing phi of t let's say t x yeah phi of i mean you can take y x minus y to be i mean we can just write it like this right phi of x t this is the fundamental solution what this equation the third equation says is integral over rn phi of x t or phi of x minus y t whatever you want to write it yeah that's not a problem i mean you can use a change of variable so phi of x t dx this is going to be one okay for each time t positive now my question is how do you calculate this thing this is very easy let's write integral of rn phi of x t okay uh, dx this is 1 by 4 pi t whole power n by 2 integral over rn exponential minus mod x square by 40 okay d of x okay and this is 1 by um, pi to power n by 2 okay integral over rn exponential minus mod z square dz i hope this is fine okay exactly the same thing which we did here just a change of variable okay once you have this then this is 1 by pi to the power n by 2 okay um, this you can write it as x1 square x2 square xn square exponential that that will break it up so that will be the product of n equals to sorry i equals to 
i equals to 1 to n minus infinity to infinity exponential minus z i square dx and that is going to be 1 okay t, sorry this is dz t, t, i d z i and that is going to be 1 okay so uh, this is the properties of fundamental solution now in the next uh, portion uh, next week we, what we are going to do is we are going to use fundamental solution to um, find out the solution of uh, the initial value problem um, of the uh, you know heat equation so with this we are going to end the uh, lecture